Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced that he's bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his ascension to his heavenly home. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. Hello. Today we're celebrating Pentecost, uh, which is a really exciting festival. It's when we remember that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and sent them out into the world to preach the good news. And so we're thinking about that in our service today as well. It's also known as the church's birthday. And the reason for that is the disciples before that, they were just sat around not knowing what to do. They weren't empowered to do anything and they weren't going to change the world, those little disciples without the Holy Spirit. And so when the Holy Spirit came, it completely changed them, and it was the birth of the church as we know it. And so um, we often have cake. Um, if you've got cake at home, please celebrate the church's birthday today. I haven't got any cake, I'm afraid. Um, but what I have got is a candle and uh, a match. And so I'm just going to light this candle to remember the church's birthday. Shall we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. For those times we stifle your spirit, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For those times we ignore your whispers and shouts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For those times when we turn away from your wonders and miracles. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo.
receive our prayer. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Heavenly Father, you sent the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples, filling them with joy, peace and courage. We pray that the Spirit will also give us the courage to share your message and your peace in the world. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you su suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they did not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever thought about what it was like to be the disciples waiting in Jerusalem, waiting and waiting? They'd be told by Jesus to wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And so there they were, sat and waiting, not knowing what to expect. In my bowl here, I've put a liquid to represent the disciples, just sat, not knowing what to do with themselves, cooking a bit, I guess, cleaning, bickering, I don't know, playing cards. And then suddenly, on the day of Pentecost, they have a sense of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And it's a remarkable outpouring, and they feel amazing. And they can speak in different languages and they can see flames on each other's heads. And it's so exciting. Their hearts are absolutely full to overflowing. And they don't, they don't be, they can't contain how they're feeling. It is so remarkable that it's not just for them. It's for the whole world. And they remember that Jesus said, that this wasn't just for the disciples. This was for them to go out and spread the good news of Jesus out into the whole world. And so they pour outside, um, they go outside and they tell people, tell people in a language that they can understand, their native tongue, tongue all about Jesus. I wonder if you identify with this, whether you've experienced a feeling of the Holy Spirit, a kind of overflowing of your heart, a real sense of excitement at any point. What happened for you? Did you have a sense of mission, a sense of God asking you to do something? Was it, was it exciting, thrilling, scary? Did you need courage? Perhaps you identify with the waiting, the waiting for the Holy Spirit not knowing what to expect. There are some beautiful pieces of art that symbolise the Pentecost story and this is one of them. I wonder what you see in this picture that might connect with your experiences or your longings. 
Do you see perhaps the cross? A sign of suffering, a sign of difficulty to, uh, to be overcome. A recognition of pain of all that you've been through. Perhaps you see a dove, a sign of peace and hope. Something in there about new life, new experiences, a new vision, light overcoming the darkness. Perhaps you see a lot of different colour and for that, and for you that's creativity that the spirit gives uh, just new ideas, new ways of doing things that we've never thought of before. New skills, new abilities, new gifts. I wonder what Pentecost means to you this year in particular, this year when life has changed so much. Perhaps it's particularly meaningful for us. I pray that wherever you are in your journey, that you will know God's presence and you will have a sense of God's Holy Spirit and that that Spirit will send you out and send you out to do God's work. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. For I'm building a people of power And I'm making a people of praise that will move through this land by my spirit and will glorify my precious name. Build your church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, join our hearts, Lord, free our sun. Make us one, Lord, in your body, in the kingdom of your Son. For I'm building a people of power and I'm making a people of praise. That will move through this land by my spirit And will glorify my precious name Build your church, Lord, with a strong Lord Join our hearts, Lord, through your Son Make us one, Lord, in your body In the kingdom of your Son Spirit of God, you came upon those first disciples, huddled, frightened in that inner room. May we feel your presence with us. Spirit of God, who teaches us and leads us into truth, may we listen to your voice deep within us. Spirit of God, who is the breath of God in us, May we both live and speak that truth you teach. 
Spirit of God, wild and untamable, may we allow you to take us where you will. Spirit of God, who comforts and counsels us, may we know that you are alongside us. Spirit of God, wild, wise, loving, freeing, renew us and set us free. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit they proclaim your reign of love. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And I now invite you to light a candle as we prepare for the Pentecost Commission. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in the parish of Badshotley and Hale, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? 
We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples. We invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.